Okay guys, so here's where we're at with this thing here. So um, the first two segments were basically filmed together and um, um, so there was no chance to uh, to edit the uh, the second the second segment because it was already shot. Um, I pretty obviously uh, realized that uh, um, the magnet in the end wasn't gonna wasn't gonna do the deal, right? So um, everybody's right that suggested putting something on the end here. Uh, we got to get closer to the uh, the spindle bore. So I I ordered some different. Uh, flavors of magnets that are easy to attach here. These have a little countersunk uh, feature in them. And this is uh, 3 quarter inch diameter, 7 eighths diameter, and 1 inch diameter. So, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to end up with there. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the, well, you know what, I don't want to separate those right now. Um, it's going to be the 1 inch. Now, here's the problem is, um, you know, this fits the taper, but the exit diameter, what I call the exit diameter, where this uh, angled surface intersects this uh, perpendicular, or the, this surface here, this flat surface, is smaller than one inch, a little bit. Not much, a little bit. So what I need to do is, uh, I either need to use a smaller magnet, or what I can do is adjust the length of this a little bit until a one inch magnet will go up in the spindle, which is what I'm going to do. Because this way I can control the distance of the edge of this magnet to the, uh, the steel of the spindle bore. Okay, So we're going to use the one inch one. So we're going to shorten this. Um, we're going to just face a little bit off of that. And it works out to about 160 thousandths roughly. Uh, we'll probably go just a little bit further. It's, a lot, it's easier to take some off. Pretty hard to put it back. So we'll kind of sneak up on it. Um, and then um, we'll. Um, I need to put a helicoil in the uh, in the bore here since I drilled that five millimeters for the M6 uh, for this end. So it's a little bit big for uh, um, this number eight screw that that fits the uh, that fits the countersink nicely. Okay, so we'll put a little stainless helicoil in there uh, after we shorten it and then uh, mount this one inch magnet to it. So we're going to pop back over to the lathe. We'll check this up and get it spinning nice. We'll face about 160 thousandths, maybe a teeny bit more. And then we'll install a helicoil and then we'll give this thing a try. And dee -dee -dee -dee, crossing my fingers, um, hoping that uh, that takes care of business there. Um, so, I th you know, theoretically, I guess I could stack these up to uh, if I wanted to. Yeah, that would work. So one inch, seven eighths, and three quarter. Just stack those babies up and uh, really get it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put this in here, and we got to get it straight with the world. Um, also, I don't want to. You can see the serrations on these jaws are pretty gnarly, and uh, we don't want to put any chowder marks in the. Uh, in our nice part here, so we're going to use these little copper jaws, and you can see how those are bent up, um, and you can see what the inside looks like uh, from whaling on uh, parts there. Okay, and these are about mm, a little less than a millimeter thick, about uh, thirty thousandths, something like that. Um, okay. Lucky, yeah. Okay. So one thing what we're gonna do actually that fits pretty good. Um, I was doing something two inches in diameter and I opened it up just a little bit and it looks like I'm pretty close. So what I want to do is just kind of pre-straighten that with the world. So what we're gonna do this simple Simon because this isn't a real a real fussy deal. And we can indicate that face and bump it in if we want or what we can do is just stick it on the stick it on an axis here, which is what we're going to do here. Pull it up to the front like so. Okay. Push it in a little more. Okay. 
and then we'll just uh, that's the hard part I don't want to push it off axis too much Looks like I'm actually pretty close, so all right. Let's see if we can pull that out with that. Yeah, that works. Okay. Yeah, it's out a little bit. So we might bop that around a little uh, to get it straight with the world. Let's uh, indicate that a little bit. some normal to that surface. This one looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's see how we look on the face. So you see these Noga mounts, they just whip around like nobody's business. Tap in. Let me get. I got to get a little doinker to doink on that a little bit. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe a little. Uh, it's pretty tight. Okay, I got to get a different little uh, little tapper. So I'm going to be facing that corner off, so it's okay if I tap on it a little bit. Using my A-bomb tapper. Bink. I don't want to overshoot. Pretty good. Jeez, one and a half. That's the thing. Come on. Oh yeah, now sweet. You just keep. <laughs> you can't resist to keep tapping on it, right? That's the. Uh, that's the problem with that whole deal is you know, that needle's moving you want to do something about it <laughs> even sometimes when you can't let's see what we got here all right so we got to make a little adjustment here all right well, see if we can do this without wanking it around too much
I think that I'm pretty uh, okay with that. Use this uh, uh, CCGT uh, carbide insert. It's a, uh, a Vardex model. So I'm just going to touch off there, cold, zero, come up, and then let her rip. So we're going to take uh, 160. 65,000 saw, or 161,000. saw me I had it this way initially right and then I rethought it real quickly <laughs> and I switched it this way and the reason was I could do the the OD and the ID in, without changing the tool or using another tool so I already ran a tap the helicoil tap through there uh, you can see some threads in there I want to run it through again and chase it and then we'll install a helicoil and uh, we'll give this little sucker a try well, on second thought, I said, you know what, let's just take a look at it and see what it looks like. While I got it in the lathe and all dialed in. So that's that's what it's going to be there. Let's see, I already got some crud on that magnet, but that's, uh, that's going to be a fact of life with that. So, uh, I don't know. So you see there's a little step there because what we care about is this corner here and uh, that's the one that's going to be really close to the spindle bore there so uh, now I don't want to lose lose a hold of that so I'm going to take that off carefully take this out of the lathe install a helicoil and we'll try it in the spindle we're just going to chase this uh, make sure I'm deep enough Pretty good. So this is the helicoil tap here, and this is uh, 832. And then there, um, for those of you that haven't installed helicoils, this is what they look like. There's a little helicoil, 832, so it's got, it's like a little helical spring, but it's got a little stopper tang on there. And I don't know if it's, I'm zoomed in close enough, but there's a little notch in that, and then we're going to knock that loose with a punch. We'll take that driving tang out of there. So this is the, the starting tool that you engage. These are real handy for thread repairs or reducing a uh, uh, 
reducing a, a diameter or something like that. So I'm going to run this in and you can see it winding in there. I'm going to go below the surface, below my chamfer and I don't know, maybe a half a turn, something like that. You now you can take these out and take a look at it in there and make sure you're happy with it. What you don't want is that last loose end being uncaptured. So you want to make sure you're in the thread with that and I like the look of that. And then I gotta see which side I'm gonna hit it on. A little punch, a little hammer to go with it. Bink. And there's a little Taylor Chingus off of there. Okay, so I don't know. Should we put a magnet on there? Eh, let's wait till next week. <laughs> nah, we'll try it. Let me go grab that. Okay, so I think we're ready here. Heli coils in, got my magnet, I got my little set screw. Oops, where did my set screw go? Oh, darn it. Lost. Oh, there it is, okay. Need that. I need Mr. Magneti. Moment of truth. Okay, what do you think? Try it. Oh yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, obviously it grabs the surface real good, but... Alright, stage two is... We're going to put an M6 screw in here, or a set screw. On that, and I've got the little holder. And we're going to put the little Noga arm on now, and this is courtesy of the Noga company. And uh, there's their little logo there, so we'll put their logo uphill so it looks good. And um, um, they kind of sponsored uh, <laughs> this idea here, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. Let's see, tighten it up. Alright. Okay. So, do I trust putting an indicator on there? Yes, sir, I think I do. I have an extension arm that goes on here that holds the indicator. So, let me go grab that and we'll put that together and then, uh, yeah. So, it's just right, actually. I, you know, I, the mechanic in me says, yeah, it could be a little stronger, okay, but uh, you're right You're right there, uh, you know, it's nice, you can get it in and out, and it seats good. Alright, so I think I'm pretty happy with that, and I can rotate it a little bit. Um, hmm, maybe that's how you use that thing. Okay, anyway, let's, uh, let's get an adjuster and get an indicator on that, and we'll, uh, we'll give it a try. Okay, so here's the, uh, this is the fine adjust here, and this will, um, actually I think I'm supposed to have a washer in there, um, well let's just go ahead and put it in there, actually I probably should tighten that up. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to have a washer in there. So we're blah, 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 loose as a goose, and uh, this is also uh, part of the uh, the tooling uh, that I requested from Noga for testing. So this is one of their fine adjust uh, holders that goes on the ends of their arms, and it has a five millimeter dovetail, uh, five sixteenths, and then three eighths. Uh, so you can hold uh, a variety of indicators there. So I have one of those on my other ones that I like. So let's. Uh, Grab Mr. Uh, indicator, Spindicator. Alright, All right. I think this thing's pretty happy here. Let's see, I'll take that around. Go there. Let's see. Put that in 
neutral. We can move that. Go whipping around, and then we can just pop it right out. Pop it right in. Listen her up. Swing around. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, probably about as far as I'm going to take this. Maybe I'll get that anodized or something like that. But uh, there's kind of the finished product there. And um, so this is a one inch diameter, um, 25 millimeter diameter by um, three, three millimeter, a little more than three millimeter thick uh, neodymium magnet. And these came from uh, a guy off eBay. He had a whole bunch of them, so I bought a bunch. Uh, arm is compliments of the Noga company. Fine adjust is compliments of the Noga company as well. And, um, oops, I got one more thing to say, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, oh, you know what, that was the other thing. Guys were asking about the, uh, the fit there. So, maybe we'll uh, do a little, a little blue in action there. Got the cap in my mouth. <laughs> not conducive to uh, to talking there well let me let me blow this up we'll let it dry a little bit and then we'll test it in the spindle okay so all right let's uh, I think that's dry enough Oop. all right well, it's hitting a little harder on one side than the other but across the, the width of it there, it looks okay. Give it another little twirl. Maybe it's just the way I'm doing it by hand there. Uh, no. I don't know. That's uh, not touching on that side too hard. Oh, is it touching down there? Huh, interesting. Okay, well, anyway, there's the fit there. Um, you know, reading these things... Uh, this might be touching too, so maybe if I loot, maybe if I take the magnet off, that'd be a better test. But um, anyway, there it is. R8 uh, Noga uh, indicator holder. Okay, so one last thing that I wanted to say was uh, um, I didn't want to take full credit for this uh, this idea. I saw I saw a similar one um, uh, at another shop. So the credit for this idea goes to Mick down at the uh, UC Berkeley uh, Mechanical Engineering Shop. He made one a uh, long time ago and, uh, and I caught a glimpse of somebody using it there and uh, said, oh hey, that's a good idea, maybe I'll make one of those later on, right? Now, what I should have done was went back and looked at it a little closer and I probably could have saved myself a lot of work. Um, so Mick, thanks for the great idea, uh, giving you a shout out for the credit on that and uh, special thanks to the Noga company for uh, giving me some tools to test with this. I think we got a decent idea here. So uh, thanks for watching.